Zaryade Park. Did I say it right this time? So I went to Zaryade in a couple of videos, the newest park in Moscow. And I went to Kolomen Kolomeninska, I probably said that wrong too, which I believe is the oldest park in Moscow. And I've been thinking, what is the most famous park in Moscow? And I haven't really had time to go here, but my phone says it's going to be snowing starting tomorrow for at least a week. So this may be my last chance of the year to get this park for you without snow. This is Gorky Park, and according to my research, is the most famous park in Moscow. And the question would be today, how do parks in Moscow compare to your parks? Or how does the most famous park in Moscow compare to your most famous park in your part of the world? So we got the, that looks like the Brandenburg Gate to me, like in Germany. So I found another hammer and sickle here. Uh, just something I think is really interesting when I see that because I, I know they wouldn't put it up today. So it's like finding a little piece of history that is still standing. Have you heard the term Gorky Park before? Um, it is in popular culture. I'll talk about that in a minute. We've got uh, kiosks here for food like you see in a lot of these parks. This park was opened in 1928 officially. Um, in my research before that, it was just uh, unofficial gardens for the wealthy people that were living on the riverbank in this area. And it's named after Maxim Gorky, who is a famous Russian writer and shares the first name with my last child, little Max. And Maxim Gorky died in 1936, so that means he got to know in his old years that there was a big park named after him. So here is Moskva River, Moscow River. You can see bridges and cruise ships, little river cruise ships, uh, so you can have dinner and go on wonderful dates with your Diepeshka wife and some ducks. That looks so, so cold to me, but they're not human, so it probably feels different to them. So this park is 300 acres, and there's a very famous song uh, that was sung about this park. There is a semi-famous book written about this park, in a way. Um, and there is a not so famous movie based on the book from the 80s regarding this park. And it looks like they're covering the plants that need to be shielded from the harsh winter. So I did get my Glent van here and they have an inside spot, which is really nice because I need to warm up. So this is served in a coffee cup. It is hot, it is spiced, I believe it's German. It's red wine served like coffee in these wintry places. And this is a little cookie that came with it for free. It's called, they call it pachinki. It's a gingerbread with sugar on it. This is where I enjoyed my Glent Vane. They are playing jazz, Creole style music in and outside. I know it because I am from the Gulf of Mexico. So it's encouraging that they're playing this music. Again, it is a small world after all, and we have a lot in common. Behind me is the giant samovar that Russians use to make tea, part of their history, part of their culture. Winds of Change is the famous song, and if you pull it up on YouTube, you'll recognize it, um, especially if you're my age, um, give or take a couple decades. Um, it's performed by a German rock band, the Scorpions, and I guess the one of the members of the band were here and they were inspired 
um, sitting and feeling the wind and looking out over the park. And if you listen to the lyrics or look at the lyrics, you'll see he's talking about this place. I found some more ducks at the pond. Actually, I ate at a restaurant with my wife and kids here in the summer. It was really beautiful. Ducks are swimming by while you're eating. Closer to this bridge, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like it's glass covered, so I'm not sure what that would be for. I should have worn these sunglasses when I was talking about Winds of Change, since it's a rock song. Anyway, um, I just had to reshoot one of my inserts because <laughs> Stupidly, I was singing out loud uh, the song to myself while I was trying to film. Um, but I also mentioned that Gorky Park had a book named after it. So there is a novel called Gorky Park, um, and it is the first in a series of detective murder novels. And the reason why it's called Gorky Park is it's about a Russian detective who discovered three murdered bodies in Gorky Park. and. That's why it's called Gorky Park. After that, the novel goes on and tries to solve the murders. And so that's the only connection to Gorky Park. But it is cool if you like to read crime novels and you're interested in Russia as a setting. The novel, though, is written by an American, so perhaps it's not as authentic as it would have been had a Russian written it. So what is this, these gold doors underneath the bridge? Looks like some sort of art something. So I found this greenhouse bridge. I have to talk kind of quiet because it's echoing. It's actually not cold because it's working like a greenhouse. The sun's coming in and trapping the heat. It's warming up. Um, but this is just a pedestrian bridge that goes over Moscow River. And um, people are hanging out in here. It's like the, the indoor park for winter time, it looks like. And it's got a nice, beautiful view. So here's the bridge and more sun. Um, but anyway, uh, I mentioned there was also a not so popular movie um, called Gorky Park based on the novel. Um, and I watched it in preparation for this video, 1983. Um, and I quite enjoyed it actually. <laughs> for a movie that old. Of course, I went to film school. I like films anyway. Um, but if you like thrillers and detective type films, um, I think it's completely fine. Um, like I said, the, the novel was not written by a Russian. It was written by an American, written in the 80s. So you can only imagine. Um, it has this undertone of Russia's a cold, depressing place um, and it, so I imagine if you're a Russian it might kind of irritate you a little bit kind of like when I watch Hollywood movies um, even though I'm an American and I worked in Hollywood um, I, I can sense it when a lot of Hollywood movies they have this underlying tone that we're having a good time but just so you know don't forget um, this is really a bad place America there's some birds warming themselves on the little dock there. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I'm fine with honest storytelling in movies. I just don't like it when I can smell it immediately. But the movie actually has some famous stars in it. Uh, William Hurt and Lee Marvin and Brian Dennehy. So Hurt and Dennehy were definitely um, from my childhood movie stars. And Lee Marvin would be like from my father's childhood an even more famous star. Um, so it's cool if you like movies. Watch Gorky Park starring Hurt, Marvin, and Dennehy. Oh, and one more thing. It was filmed in Sweden and Finland, not in Russia, because Russia would not give permission. 
It's actually hard for me to believe that William Hurt and Brian Dennehy are both no longer with us. They both passed away fairly recently. Um, but, you know, it's just a good reminder to us all that you gotta live your best life because uh, it will not last. Really think deeply about, you know, what I need to do and what we all need to do with the time that we're given. And most of the center of this park is blocked off for construction. I was in uh, Disney last year and Epcot was the same way. So I will end here at Pioneerski Pond, which is right next to the big gate we walked through in the beginning. So this park, most famous park in Moscow, where Moscovites would like to spend their Saturday, I believe. And for you, as a Westerner, an American or a Brit or somewhere else, the park where you would like to spend your Saturday. Is it like this? Is it not like this? What do you think? Did you like this video? If you did, click like, click subscribe, ring the bell notification, and click up here to see what happens next.